If you're watching this, there's a good chance you've never actually seen the Milky Way. Not like your parents did, probably not even close. And chances are, in just a few years, you might not be able to see it at all. The number of stars we can see with the naked eye has reduced dramatically. Right now, over a third of humanity has never experienced the Milky Way. That's one in three people. If you live in the US or Europe, the number rises to about 80% of people who live in areas without clear skies. The stars we took for granted for millennia are disappearing from our view. And sadly, it's only gonna get worse. The night sky is quietly fading away and it's happening so gradually, we are barely noticing. So what's going on here? And how did we go from having effectively the entire universe as our ceiling to losing it all in just a few generations? To understand what is happening, we need to go back all the way to the beginning. For most of history, the stars were essential to human life. They guided explorers across the world, helped astronomers map out the cosmos and inspired myths that shaped entire cultures. The sky wasn't just something people looked at, it was something they depended on. But fast forward a couple hundred years and the night sky we once knew has become unrecognizable almost. We've become so disconnected that most of us don't even realize what we have lost. But how on earth did all of that happen in only a few decades? Let's look at a really crazy story. In 1994, a massive earthquake knocked out power across Los Angeles plunging the entire city into darkness. Southern California was rocked by a massive earthquake. This tells the whole story in one number and one word. Paper 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale, of course, this part of the world has been badly shaken is more than a play on words. It was the first quake to knock out power in every area of the Los Angeles region. But the most unexpected thing wasn't on the ground, it was actually in the sky. With a massive power outage, the city was plunged into darkness and people started noticing something really unusual that night. For the first time in decades, millions looked up and saw something they didn't recognize. The night sky, but not the faint glow they were used to, but actual stars, thousands of them. Constellations, even the Milky Way, was visible in the middle of an urban area like LA. And then something really strange happened. 911, what's your emergency? People started panicking. Even the Griffith Observatory started receiving reports about weird clouds in the sky. Some even thought it could be extraterrestrial. I mean, can you imagine? The Milky Way had become so unfamiliar that people within just a couple of decades couldn't even recognize it anymore. It's crazy, like how on earth did we even get there? You see, the answer lies in something that is basically everywhere, but rarely noticed. It started with the invention of the light bulb in the 19th century. And at first, it seemed pretty harmless and useful even. Artificial light meant increased productivity, safety, and cities that never slept, basically. But no one anticipated the price we would pay later on. So let's look at this. That's how the Earth looks like from space. At first glance, it seems really beautiful. But what you're looking at isn't just light, it's actually pollution. Every one of those bright spots represents a place where you can't see the stars anymore. And in most cities, the sky is washed out by a hazy glow of artificial light nowadays. And it's only gonna get worse. Studies show that the night sky is becoming 10% brighter every single year. And while that might not sound like much, over time, it adds up quite massively. You see, as our population grows, and so does our need for artificial light. I don't know about you, but to me, it feels like this whole thing is getting completely out of hand. Nowadays, most places are packed with street lights, billboards, headlights, and all of these are not only super inefficient, but have added up to a massive problem. The phenomenon is called light pollution, so unless you live in the middle of nowhere, you are probably affected whether you like it or not. 
the most powerful thing that's governing when you want to be asleep and when you want to be awake is light. And in particular, it's governed by sunlight. Studies show that artificial light messes with human health. You see, your body relies on darkness to control your sleep. Too much light exposure at night has been linked to sleep disorders, heart disease, and even cancer. Yeah. It, I think it really is a bad thing for us. I think it's akin to people not getting sunlight in the winter. Inside all of us is a clock determines when we want to be sleepy and when we want to be awake. And that force is a so-called circadian force. Your circadian rhythm basically tells your brain, hey, it's time to shut down and repair. Without it, however, your system gets totally out of sync and that has a pretty severe impact. And it's not just physical. It also messes with your mental health and creates restlessness, anxiety and stress. And it has an impact that most people don't even realize is happening. You might think the street light outside of your window or the glow from all of your electronic devices isn't a big deal, but it's all adding up and it's slowly breaking down your body and mind. And if that is what it's doing to us humans, imagine the damage it's causing to everything else on planet Earth. Now, as I said, if you're watching this, you are probably impacted by the issue much more than you think and where you live plays a pretty big role. So let's find out how bad it is for you specifically. There's actually a scale to measure how much of the night sky you can see. It's called the Bordel Scale and it basically ranks the sky from like perfect darkness to total light pollution. So let's look at the scale at level one. Here you have a perfectly dark sky and practically every single star in the galaxy is visible. Now, as you go up the scale, then the sky gets worse. At level three, the glow of artificial light starts to creep in. The stars are still there, but they are starting to lose their clarity. At the middle of the scale, the damage becomes obvious and the sky starts to feel empty. You can see a few stars, but they're faint and scattered. At level seven, most of the stars are gone. What's left is a dull haze with only the brightest stars barely visible. And at level nine, the sky is erased completely. A thick artificial glow blocks everything, leaving nothing but a pale blank ceiling above you. And here's the reality. If you live nearby an urban area, you are probably somewhere between level six and nine. And that means you're only seeing a tiny fraction of what's really up there. And sadly, that's the reality for most of the population in the developed world. We talked about the impact it has on us, but that is only relatively small compared to the rest of the planet. So even in quite a rural area like this and on a clear night, when the street lights start to glow, the sky glows and that obscures the faintest stars. You see, light pollution isn't only a human problem. The entire planet relies on the stars in one way or another. And light pollution is messing with the natural world in ways we're only starting to understand. It doesn't seem obvious, but a lot of animals use the stars to migrate. Some nights have a tremendous number of birds moving. We're talking about hundreds of millions of birds moving through airspaces at continental scale. Without the stars, they tend to get lost or die from exhaustion. Sea turtles follow the brightest lights into the ocean. Insects swarm artificial lights until they die, leaving predators like birds and bats without food and even trees can't function properly. Too much artificial light is delaying seasons and throwing entire ecosystems out of balance. The chain reaction is really devastating. And the worst part is the problem is growing and nobody seems to be paying attention. And actually the whole thing is pretty ironic. Because of social media, more and more people started to document their travels and the interest in stargazing and astrophotography has probably never been higher. If you try to photograph the stars yourself, you know the struggle because it isn't as easy as it used to be. You need the right camera, the perfect weather and a dark location far away from city lights. And even then, it only takes a stray cloud or a street light to completely ruin your shot, basically. I can tell you that it's super, super frustrating if you want to produce a video about the stars but that's where platforms like Motion Array 
have been a lifesaver for me personally. They not only made another video possible, they've also saved me on so many occasions where I had a tight deadline or needed a very specific shot or soundtrack to finish their job. Their team is amazing because they support small creators like me and in case you haven't heard of them, they are an all-you-can-eat licensing platform where you can download hundreds of thousands of assets. Take the time lapses you've seen in this video for example, capturing all of those would have taken me weeks or possibly even years. I was able to license all of those shots directly from Motion Array, saving me like hours of frustration probably. So if you upload videos for social media, you'll understand how important it is to find the right visuals and audio to tell your story and Motion Array makes that process really, really simple. The subscription plans are also super affordable, starting at less than 20 bucks per month, Plus, if you're serious about filmmaking, they even have an AI voiceover feature, so you don't have to hire a voice actor, but can instead let AI do the job and you can upgrade for only $10. If you're interested, it gets even better because the link in the description gives you 50 bucks off when you sign up for an annual plan, which is really, really amazing. So definitely go check that out. Now, as I said, every year the night sky fades a little bit more, cities grow larger, brighter and the stars grow dimmer basically. And unfortunately, this isn't a problem that will like automatically fix itself. And the longer we ignore it, the harder it will get to reverse basically. But here's the thing, there's still a way to change the course we are on. I wonder if we're going to get to a point with technology that we figure out how to use some sort of diffuse lighting everywhere where we minimize light pollution, at least minimize it to the point where you do see stars. Yeah. We just need to act before it is too late, basically. We don't need every light to be on and we definitely don't need them glowing all night. Experts say that a third of all outdoor lighting is wasted, basically. Street lights pointing at the sky, buildings lit up until like 4 a.m. and lights that do nothing except for like wasting energy. But it's not just about cities. It also starts with us. LEDs and screens are in our hands practically every day and switching to warmer tones or cutting back on screen time before bed doesn't just reduce pollution, it also improves your own sleep and health. So it's basically a no-brainer. But even with all of this progress, there is a reality we can't just ignore. And there are only a handful of places left on Earth where the stars still look like they did centuries ago basically, and it's typically remote spots. But they are also disappearing. If we let this continue, those last dark skies will become nothing more but a memory and something that we've only seen in pictures or described in stories. Personally, I see this as a reason to spend a lot more time out in nature and if you want to do the same, there are maps that track light pollution and they will show you exactly where to go to find clearer skies. The darker the spot, the brighter the stars. And just a short drive outside of the city can make a huge difference sometimes. There are also dark sky parks which are like dedicated to preserving the night sky specifically and they are designed to like limit artificial light, giving visitors a chance to experience the stars in ways most people probably never will. And finding those spots and making the effort to explore them might be the closest thing we have to reclaiming the night sky. The stars haven't gone anywhere. They're still here and they're just hidden from view in most places. And just because we can't always see them doesn't necessarily mean we have to feel disconnected. The question is if you're willing to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit to find them, because if we wait too long, those opportunities, they might be gone forever. So make sure you see them while you still can if you enjoyed this video, you might also want to check out that one right here. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you one of the next ones. Well, we used to look up in the sky and wonder at our place in the stars. <laughs>